This is Peter Williamson, born in 1730, died in 1799, otherwise known as Indian Peter, and despite his appearance in this picture, he did contribute an important service to our postal history, namely setting up a private penny post in Edinburgh in 1774. But before we talk about that, I really want to talk about his life because it's one of the most unbelievable stories you'll ever hear, and is certainly worthy of a Hollywood movie. He was born in a croft in the village of Aboyne, on the edge of the Highlands in Aberdeenshire, Scotland, and at an early age he was sent to live with his aunt in Aberdeen. In these times, there was a thriving trade in kidnapping and stealing children. At around the age of 13, he was spotted by men seeking strong backs for colonial plantations in North America. And while playing at the quayside one day in 1743, he was kidnapped. The ship which took him to North America ran aground during a storm off New Jersey. Under threat of sinking, the crew saved themselves, leaving the cargo of kidnapped children and men still on board. The ship, however, did not sink, and once the storm had passed, the crew returned to retrieve their cargo. Williamson was taken to Philadelphia and was sold for £16 as a servant for a period of seven years to a fellow Scotsman, Hugh Wilson. Wilson himself had been kidnapped as a boy and sold into servitude, but like most indentured servants, he eventually earned his freedom. Wilson taught the young boy how to read and write in return for an extra year's labour. Wilson died in 1750, just before the end of a young lad's indenture. Before he died, he did, however, give the boy his freedom. He also gave him his best horse and an amount of cash. With this setup, Pete moved around the colonies for a time and then, at the age of 24, married and took on a farm in Pennsylvania. In 1754, a band of Native American Indians attacked his farm and took him prisoner. He was held prisoner for several months, and during that time, he said he witnessed many murders and scalpings, although this part of his story is often questioned by scholars today. After several months, he eventually escaped his captors, and on returning to his farm, he found that it had been burned down, and during his time away, he discovered that his wife had also died. Angry and frustrated, he now decided to enlist in a British Army regiment, and after two years, rose to the rank of lieutenant. But luck was not to be on his side once again, and he was captured by French troops and marched to Quebec. Once there, he was exchanged for French prisoners of war, and then he was sent on a ship to Plymouth, England. Having had a damaged left hand from being wounded, he was discharged from the army and given a small gratuity of six shillings to help him. Rather than settle in Plymouth, he decided to walk the 621 miles back to Aberdeen. His luck changed for the better when he arrived in York. It was there that he recounted his life story to some influential men who encouraged him to write about his exploits. His book was published and a thousand copies were sold, earning him £30. He continued his journey to Scotland and on the way he took to dressing as a Native American Indian, giving displays of Indian life. He eventually arrived back in Aberdeen in 1758, 15 years after he had been kidnapped. Once there, he denounced the men behind the indentured worker trade. However, he was arrested and banished from the city. His book was also publicly burned by the hangman. He then headed for Edinburgh, where he settled for the remainder of his life. While there, lawyers read his book and encouraged him to sue the Aberdeen magistrates. He won and was awarded £100. A further £200 was paid to him a few years later when he successfully sued his kidnappers 
all those years ago. His newfound fame and wealth enabled him to open up a tavern, a printing shop, he invented a form of waterproof ink, and published the first ever street directory of Edinburgh. So now this brings us to the part of the story where he set up a penny post in Edinburgh. Letters and packages up to three pounds in weight were dispatched to any place within a mile of the city's central cross, which is a structure that marks the market square. This service would run every hour on the hour. 17 shopkeepers were paid to receive the letters, effectively creating the first post offices. Four uniformed postmen were employed to deliver the mail from the shops. Their hats had the words Penny Post written on them and were numbered 1, 4, 8 and 16, giving the impression the business was bigger than it actually was. This service ran for 30 years in Scotland and was eventually integrated into the General Post Office. Williamson received £25 goodwill and a small pension of 25 shillings a year. He married twice more in his life, his last leading to a bitter divorce. In his final years, he returned to running the tavern, where he seems to have drunk himself to death in 1799. He died almost penniless and is buried in an unmarked grave in the old Colton burial ground in Edinburgh. So that's the amazing story of Peter Williamson. If his life isn't worth a Hollywood movie, then I don't know what is. Anyway, that's it for this one. Thank you for joining me today. I hope you enjoyed the video and learned something new. If you did, then please do subscribe to the channel. Give the video a thumbs up and share it around. That stuff really does help. And thanks for watching if you have. So until the next one, bye for now.